Yeah, I think it's a very systematic process that we can follow. The first thing I do when I have to transform a business from a data rich to an AI first business, I start with the business leaders and the subject matter experts. And I kind of start there, not at the data level. And I understand the business, so domain knowledge is very important. Then I understand the data and the data quality and diversity of data. Then I kind of put it all together, the domain on one side, data on one side, and we identify very key, what we call AI APIs that need to be built for that business. So if it's a retail business, we have a certain collection. For it's a refinery business, it's a certain collection. So knowing your AI APIs that you have to build, and then we kind of divide that and, and work on each API. And it's an iterative process. We start with one version of the model and keep improving. But knowing a top-down picture for a vertical and knowing the menu of all AI APIs is a very critical first step, I think, to a, become a top-down data strategy person or an AI strategy person in a company. So uh, first way to understand that the birth of data did not happen because they were anticipating AI to come over. It happened because you know programmers had to put some logs in the system or we wanted to create reports out of the data. Therefore, the quality of data, the way it is collected, the volumes that are managed badly uh, was not done in the way an AI person would have done it. So the first thing is the quality and hygiene of data is very important. And I think uh, a proper data strategy for a company has to be redone. We cannot carry the legacy data strategy, but how do we redo the data strategy for the company? Given the new use case of data, the more important use case, which is AI use case, not a reporting use case or a bug fixing use case. So that is one thing. Again, you know, today we have lots of very beautiful tools that are being used, different types of tools for different types of data, right? So we have graph databases, time series databases, multivariate databases, no SQL databases. So how do we think about all these variety of tools which are specialized in different types of data and how do we say what tool to use where and especially the tools will evolve so how do we create a data strategy that is agnostic of tools can i switch one graph database with another graph database so that the next layer doesn't care about it because i have built a api driven data product so i think the layer of you know api driven data product has to be owned by the chief data officer of the company and the tools should come and go as needed as they are evolving. And the consumer of data should be agnostic of the storage systems and tools that we are using. But today there are beautiful tools, you know, Couchbase, uh, you know, um, Cloudera, many, many, you know, Neo4j. So there are a lot of beautiful tools out there. They have really optimized the way they handle data. Uh, but knowing what tool to use for what, uh, works, you know, th that's what I wanted to talk about, which is a data strategy drives the right type of data that drives the right type of data tools. And then migration of data to the new data strategy is, is another interesting challenge. Yeah, see, the, the as we collected data over the last 10, 20 years, we realized that there are good use cases of data and there are potentially bad use cases of data. So therefore, how do we make sure that data is privacy protected. And uh, you know, if you look at Gmail data, for example, or Paytm data, or you know, any data which is you know, healthcare data, education data, it's supposed to be very, very privacy protected. So there's a whole layer of privacy protection that has to happen before the data gets into the hands of a data scientist, right? Uh, second problem with data is data captures the biases that humans already have. So if the banks have been giving loans more to the males and not to the females, that bias has already creeped into the data. How do I discover that bias? How do I undo for that bias, meet the regulations on decision making is another challenge. So data is great, but data is not everything. It captures some of our sins of the past and therefore we have to undo those sins. And that is another conscious thing that data officers and data scientists have to do to make sure that we detect the right biases and remove them before we start to build models and you know all of that stuff. So I think these two aspects, right, a, a very systematic data strategy, curation of data for privacy and security, and removal of bias, uh, all this should be part of the data governance framework, so that you know we are not worried about the models are never wrong, the data is wrong. 
in a way, right? The models are what the data is telling them. So I think there's a big responsibility now on what kind of data we use to train our models and all that. All the way from simple models to chat GPT models. If we train them on the wrong data, we'll get the wrong output. So there's a lot of effort going on on data-driven thinking in modeling. It's not just algorithm-driven modeling, it's data-driven modeling. Yeah, I think the, you know, the, the, as the companies are evolving, uh, you know, their data strategy is evolving. They're learning from each other what is working, what is not working. It is complex. We have created silos in the past for data. How do we bring the silos together? Nobody knows because nobody has done that properly, right? But let's say Googles of the world have done it. Uh, how do others do it, right? So the idea is there are leaders who have figured this out and, you know, bringing those leaders with the rest of us to kind of have these kind of conferences will really help everyone accelerate their data strategy better. So I really love these events and look forward to more of these. And I learn a lot when I come here.